Today on Melanie's Math, it is freezing outside, and I'm going to show you how to graph lines using slope intercept form. So, here in West Virginia, we are enjoying a snow day, and I'm going to be doing what all math teachers do on their free time, which is math. So, with that, let's hop straight into the tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at slope intercept form. So let's, if you're taking notes with me, let's go over on the right hand side of the paper uh, within the blank space and let's write down slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so let me explain what this means. Um, first of all, let's underline the letter m. This, uh, a number is going to go in this position. And the number that goes in this position uh, is the slope of the line. Okay, now in parentheses below the word slope, you notice that they use the letter M for slope, and this is not what it stands for, but I'm gonna write, let's write the, the word move in parentheses, because as we go to graph this line, we're gonna need to know how it moves, and we can think of the slope, whatever number is in that position. So slope intercept form is gonna be Y equals a number times x, and that first number is going to represent the slope. The plus b part, instead of underlining it, let's circle it, but we're going to include the plus sign with it, because really this can be plus or minus, and we got to always pay attention to what that sign is. But there's going to be a number in that position, and that number is not the slope, but the y-intercept. So in other words, it tells us, if we're trying to graph a line, it'll tell us where the line crosses the y-axis. And so Below it in parentheses, this isn't really why they use the letter B, but we can remember that it's where the line begins. So let's write the word begin. So if we go to graph a line and it's written in slope intercept form, the number at the end tells us where to put our first dot, where to begin. And then since we need two points to make a line, we can follow the slope to find another point on that line. So let's see if this makes sense by looking at the example number one over on the left hand side of the paper. Is this written in slope intercept form? Yes, because it's y equals a number times x and then plus or minus another number. So let's kind of break it down and to see what it is. The first thing I wanna look at is I wanna to try to underline the slope of this line. So let me zoom in over here and we're gonna underline the number one third because that's the slope of the line. That'll tell us where to move. And then I want to circle the y-intercept. In this case, it's a 4, but not just a 4, it's a minus 4. So let's circle the minus 4. And that's just going to train our brain to identify the two pieces. So the minus 4 tells us where to begin. And then the 1 third tells us where to go from there. Let's try it. So our first dot is going to be at negative 4 on the y-axis. It's a y-intercept. So let's go to negative four on the y-axis and let's make a dot right there. Uh, we know that you need two points to draw a line and right there is one of them at negative four. But how do we know where the, what direction the line is going from there? Well, we know it's slope. We know the slope of the line is one third. In other words, it has a rise of one and a run of three. So from the point that we just made at negative four, let's rise one and run three. So I'm gonna go up one and right three. One, two, three, it should be right around in there. Okay, so now that we have two points, we can draw a line. Don't think of it so much as connecting the dots, uh, but more so drawing a line that goes all the way through both dots, okay? So I'll see if I can get this drawn right here. If you're following along with me, go ahead and draw this line on your paper. And this is a line that goes forever and ever in both directions. And now we've graphed the line using slope intercept form. To recap, we looked at the equation and said, okay, it, it begins at negative four, it has a y-intercept at negative four, and from there, it goes up one and right three. Now I wanna point one thing out that will help you later on. Sometimes the graph maybe isn't big enough to go up and right, and so as a backup option, look at this original dot that we made. How else could we have followed a slope of one third to get on that line besides going up and right? See, we went up and right three and landed on the line, but how else could we have done it? Maybe you've seen this before. 
Alternatively, we could have gone, instead of up and right, we could have gone down one and left three, and we still would have come across a point on that line. So sometimes like if you run out of space and you can't go up and right, if it's a positive slope, alternatively, you can go down and left. Okay, so let's apply what we just learned to number two. The equation says y equals negative two fifths x plus three, and we wanna graph this line. So what do we know? Well, let's underline the slope, which is always this number right in front of the x, negative two fifths. And then we're gonna circle the y-intercept, or that last number on the end. Now notice I'm also circling the plus sign. Make sure you circle it as well. That helps you remember that's where you begin, at plus three, and it's always on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and make our first dot up plus three on the y-axis since we know that's where the line begins. From there, all we have to do is follow a slope of negative two-fifths. Now just common sense, remember that negative slopes go downhill, so we're gonna count from that point down two and right five. So we're gonna count down two and right five and make another dot right there, okay? So now all I have to do is um, draw my line going through both points. Remember, I wanna just draw this line pretty much as big as we can here to make sure that we're showing that it goes forever and ever. I'm having trouble with the stylus there. Close enough. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the arrows on both ends. Now keep in mind, this is a, just a common sense check. It's a negative slope, it's going downhill. Remember how we said on the previous problem, if we couldn't count up and right, we could also go, go down and left? See how in this problem we went down two and right five? If for some reason we didn't wanna do that, you can always do the opposite and still end up on the line. I could have counted up two and left five and I kinda of just missed it a little bit cause I was off when I drew my line. Um, but sometimes by adding more dots before you draw the line, it'll help you draw the line a little bit more accurately. All right, so let's finish the tutorial with number three that says y equals three x minus five. Okay, so like normal, I always like to start off by uh, underlining my slope and circling my y-intercept. Remember, that y-intercept, the number at the end, tells you where to begin, and in this example, it's at negative five. Remember, always on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and put our first dot down there at negative five. Now, this is where people oftentimes get confused the slope of the line is three. Now, before we do anything else, just remember that anytime you have a whole number like the number three, you can also rewrite it as three over one, right? Like any whole number divided by one is, is itself. So that's what we're gonna do here. Anytime we see a whole number as a slope, like the number that we're underlining, the number in front of the X, uh, just draw a little fraction bar and put a one underneath it. So we're gonna think of that as three over one. That's like rise three and run one. So remember, whole numbers, just put them over top of one and then graph it. So we already have our first dot down here at negative five, but from there, we're gonna count up three and write one. So up three, one, two, three, and write one. Now, since I have room on my graph, you know what I'm gonna do before I draw my line? Is I'm gonna count up three and write one from that dot that I just made. One, two, three, write one. Do I have to do that? No, but when I go to draw my line, now I'm connecting it through all three of them and it just helps you, because you're, when you're drawing your line by hand, sometimes you can be, you know, if you get off a little bit, it can make the line go to the wrong places. So in fact, I could probably fit another one from that point up, one, two, three, write one. Okay, now I've got a bunch of points, and if my ruler and my stylus work, I can draw a line that looks right here. So let's draw a line. That's pretty close. Okay. So now we've drawn a line that has a slope of three and a y-intercept of negative five. Just one last thing before we finish is you can always think about this in reverse. So for instance, if they didn't give us an equation but they did show us this graph, like let's say we didn't know any of this stuff. Let's say we didn't know um, what the equation was, okay? And all we had is this uh, graph. You can always work backwards and say, okay, well, where would it cross the y-axis? Well, it would cross right here 
at negative 5. So I know it's like y equals something times x minus 5. And then what's the slope of the line? Well, you can always count rise over run. So a rise of 3 and a run of 1. So you would probably write it like that. You could simplify it to y equals 3x minus 5. So once you know how slope-intercept form works, you can either graph it based on an equation, or you can take a graph and write the equation that would match it. But hopefully that shows you how to use slope-intercept form to graph lines.